Welcome to the Petzl Technical Institute, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Petzl is one of our gear experts' core partners that focuses on safety and productivity for workers who apply their trade in at height industries. Consisting of 15,000 square feet of state-of-the-art technical training space, the Petzl Training Institute is located in the heart of the Salt Lake Valley. It was designed specifically to meet the needs of highly specialized clientele and the industries that we and Petzl serve. To name a few of its features, it has over 5,000 square feet of structure for technical climbing, rescue, and rope access techniques. A three-story vertical confined space training apparatus, 36-foot tall drop test structure, multiple classrooms capable of accommodating up to 135 people, and more. Plus, Petzl's North American headquarters was designed with their focus on reducing the environmental impact as much as possible as a LEED Platinum facility. This facility was built to the highest standards of sustainability, efficiency, innovation, design, and workplace experience. We sincerely appreciate the partnership that the GME Supply family of companies has with our friends at Petzl. We are America's premier outfitter of fall protection, safety equipment, and gear for at-height workers. We keep workers safe and productive on the job by offering customers timely service and expertise. Our gear experts are here to be an extension of your safety program, offering solutions and consulting in any way possible to make sure that your gear is where you need it, when you need it. One of the best ways we can do that is through our national network of distribution locations and training facilities. Everyone expects to be able to order something online or through our gear experts and get it in just a day or two. And that's what our national footprint allows us to do. Let's take a look at the time and transit for standard ground shipping from our various locations. Beginning with our headquarters centrally located in Columbia, Missouri, we're local to the heart of America. Our second location opened in Atlanta, Georgia in 2015 to service the East Coast and Southeastern U.S. In 2018, our location in the heart of Texas opened in Dallas, further establishing our southern presence. In 2020, we opened a location in Corona, California, where we have hosted live streams in the past. Late last year, we welcomed custom tool supply to our family out of Denver, Colorado. As you can see, the majority of the U.S. population is within a two-day ground shipping point from one of our locations, meaning you don't need to pay extra for expedited shipments. And look for our quick ship items, which ship the same day as long as you place the order by 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Thanks for tuning in today, and enjoy the exclusive training session ahead. Hello and welcome again. This is uh, session two of our exclusive live stream trainings. Uh, we're back again from the Petzl Technical Institute here in Salt Lake City. Uh, today joining us is Michelle Goulet from Petzl. You wanna go ahead and give a quick introduction? Yeah, hi Alex. Uh, Michelle Goulet, I've been here for 18 years now. I'm the national uh, sales uh, manager for, for Petzl. I, I used to sell their gear back in my hometown of Ottawa um, many years ago before uh, coming out to, to Utah and, and working. I'd like to uh, commend uh, GME for uh, the great work you're doing in making sure your, your customers are well educated on uh, our products and other products and uh, we're looking forward to this presentation. Awesome. So uh, today we're talking about personal protective equipment for at-height work. Uh, so yesterday we touched on some of the rescue side of things. Today we're going to be uh, chatting about other equipment that may not be in the traditional wheelhouse of fall protection. So uh, since we got a lot of stuff here, let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, so when most people think of PPE on the job site for uh, at-height work, they think harnesses, lanyards, ropes, rigging that sort of thing. Um, but there's a lot more that goes into it. So while all that's obviously really important, you have to consider the entire kit when you're working. So what are some PPE accessories uh, and what types of things does Petzl have in their arsenal uh, that 
you might want to consider for your at height workers. Sure, sure. So obviously the head is a very delicate part of the body and uh, we see uh, our solution there as a head protection system not only for impact for drop tools or that sort of thing but also for being able to mount uh, face shields, being able to mount uh, lighting and the earring protection, that sort of thing. Uh, the first thing I wanted to kind of uh, have a look at is uh, eye protection. Super important, you know, always whenever I've been on the job site I'm always thinking oh, I should have my eye protection and I reach for it and it's not around so now I just uh, have to think about flipping the the uh, the shield down uh, from the helmet and this is a polycarbonate uh, uh, eye protection shield really good for for high impact of uh, particulate coming towards you or uh, if you're hammering on a on a bolt on a tower and a piece of galvanized uh, steel comes towards you that'll be, go a long way into protecting your eyes and you know you always have to protect your eyes on the ground I could just imagine up on a tower 200 feet you're going to get into a serious problem if you can't see on your on your way down so we have the half face shields and we have the full face shields as well these are used mainly for people going into breaker panels where there could be a arc flash uh, situation there. Uh, your girlfriend's going to like you if you wear one of these and uh, you keep <laughs> your face uh, really safe. So, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and those are... Uh, what kind of ratings do those have as far as... Well, those are, are rated under uh, eye protection and face protection. It's a Z87.1 yeah. under ANSI. Um, so really important piece of gear before you leave the, before you leave the ground. Uh, we have uh, other products that are really uh, important. Obviously, protective uh, handwear. Uh, climbing those ladders, I can just imagine uh, cutting your hand open with uh, a piece of little galvanized uh, that wasn't uh, properly sanded down or whatever. Sure. So gloves are really important. Important. I actually helped with the design of these uh, and to put a carabiner hole in there and essentially, um, yeah, just a, a really good protective uh, handwear there. We, uh, we also have uh, uh, grillons. Uh, a grillon is a device, you know, when we sell to the military, we sell them a piece of product. They say, well, how many, how many functions does this piece of product have? Because I, I'm, I've only got a limited space in my, in my kit and limited amount of weight and I need to be able to use a particular product for a lot of different purposes. A tower climber, people working at height, that sort of thing, a little bit of the same thing. You want to make sure that your product can do more than one thing. Obviously, people know the Grillon as being a great uh, travel restraint and positioning lanyard. Um, it can also help you in a rescue situation where you can create a pulley system out of it. You can use it as an improved ANSI anchorage uh, uh, lanyard and uh, we don't we don't approve of this, but you know some people have used it as a suspension trauma strap mm -hmm. as well, and and there's no reason why why you can't uh, do that. So this one's a little uh, particular, and uh, we launched this one a couple of years ago, maybe up to three years ago, and that has a really important sheath on it. It's really abrasion resistant sheath. That's a that's a uh, a high tenacity. Uh, uh, polyethylene uh, uh, fibers on there and uh, your liner is just going to last a lot longer and you don't have to worry about having that protective sleeve over the the side of the rope like that as well yeah well and, uh, real quickly you mentioned all the different uses for the grion and mm -hmm. in telecom it's almost a standard item right. at this point uh, but uh, i'm going to tease for tomorrow um, we're going to be talking more about some tips and tricks for uh, different gear on the job so tune in tomorrow and learn a little bit more about that yeah, absolutely great product. And you know, uh, little things that you can carry on your on your uh, harness is uh, a roll clip like this, which is a carabiner and a pulley in one one device, and a little uh, uh, T block uh, that you can actually uh, that acts as a rope grab. So. Sometimes you got to get yourself out of trouble, either lifting equipment or lifting your partner. Uh, if you have an ID, and you can combine these two things with that, and be able to uh, to uh, perform a, a rescue with a three to one uh, mechanical advantage. So nice little piece of gear to have. And finally, we don't sell these, but little compact uh, first aid kits. The tree care industry does a really good job at doing this. Uh, we design harnesses where uh, where the the uh, compact first aid kit fits right in the back of uh, of the harness, and I think the tower industry should consider doing this as well, and Nate should promote. Uh, 
a technician is going up towers with a small little uh, compact Personal, first aid kit yeah. just within reach so that if they open up their hand, get yeah. their hand open, uh, you know, they can address their, uh, their concerns right away. Right, yeah, obviously we've got the trauma kit in the truck on the ground, but if you are bleeding out up top, you want to be able to at least wrap that up. And right. having a, a few small bandages is a lot better than some electrical tape around your thumb. So uh, that's, that's a good point. Um, so let's move on to the next topic. So while all of that gear makes a ton of sense for many industries, um, another thing to consider is compatibility across all of your PPE. So uh, what are some of Petzl's most popular options and accessories that are all compatible uh, within the Petzl line and with other manufacturers other as well? as well, yeah. We have uh, these, uh, these ease, uh, this is an ease hook connector as well as an MGO connector. Uh, MGO actually stands for Mousqueton de Grande, Grande Ouverture. So Isn't that's it? kind of a sophisticated way of saying uh, connector with a large opening. <laughs> but what we have in addition to these uh, connectors is we have a gated captive eye on here. So you can actually, you can actually modify just, just uh, for the, for the Grillon, for instance, you can either uh, switch these out and uh, obviously we don't recommend this connector for a side D-ring, but we do this one. So sometimes if you're using your Grillon in a, uh, in a two rope configuration or a doubled configuration, you'll be using this connector on there. If you're using uh, uh, your Grillon single, single strand mode and connecting directly to the tower, you'll put this one on. What's nice about these as well is these are fairly expensive devices. So if you, if you have them on a lanyard and you damage your lanyard, you, you can throw away your lanyard, but you get to keep these and put them on right. your new one. So a good way to, to, stay, uh, to stay economical. Uh, this one here opens to almost four, four and a half inch. Uh, connection point, so uh, really nice uh, for that. We have uh, other uh, other things that we've launched just more recently. Uh, this is a steel uh, anchor strap that can be used in a in a uh, vertical uh, basket or or essentially a uh, choker configuration. And even in the choker configuration, this has a 5,000 pound minimum braking strength, so it does uh -huh. meet the ANSI uh, the ANSI as well as the CSA uh, requirement there. Uh, so great, uh, great products. We also have these little uh, keepers that you can put on connectors. This is called a captive. This is called a, a string, and this is called a tango. And these are all little devices that don't look like much, but I, but I'm sure when we all took that first uh, course, you know, in how to use carabiners and stuff, the instructor told us you got to load the carabiner along its major axis. So these are all little devices that promote that, promote. Uh, essentially limit people tampering with your gear as well. Mm -hmm. and, and thirdly, uh, you know, if your lanyard is inside a captive eye like that, uh, it also uh, limits the possibility of accidental uh, disengagement. Um, so some of the other products that are great to have are uh, carry bags. I know you sell a whole bunch of different ones here. We have them in three sizes with uh, cord locks at the top. Uh, this extra large one can expand and uh, when you're in position, you'll be able to reach in and out. Uh, really nice for that and they have uh, tool uh, uh, tunnel loops carriers on yeah, the yeah. side. Uh, obviously tethering has become a really important, uh, it's always been an important issue but it seems that a lot of people promote that uh, mm -hmm. now too uh, and recently since the standard have, uh, have changed. Um, carry tools are great devices for uh, putting on your harness. Uh, I think we might have a video uh, of that. We've changed these a little bit. We put a, a protection over the gate, but they fit on all of our harnesses. They may fit on other harnesses as well. They're essentially designed for carrying uh, ice tools when you're ice climbing. Hmm. When you're ice climbing, you're hanging on with one hand and you want to be able to work with one hand and, and take that ice screw and start screwing it into the ice. Same thing for uh, people working at height, uh, construction in the street. Sometimes they may be uh, hanging on with one hand, they want to grab a tool with, with one hand as well. So these uh, curved interfaces here essentially uh, really uh, let you uh, grab that tool. Uh, remember though, uh, 10 pounds and about That's 30 pounds. Yep. These aren't uh, life safety devices, so remember never to, to use them as, as those types of things. Sure, yeah. perfect, awesome. Okay, um, and we talked a little bit about helmets earlier, but um, when you're talking about PPE, there's been a shift from 
traditional hard hats to climbing style helmets. Mm -hmm. um, and Petzl has a full line of different climbing style helmets. So can you walk us through the differences between what a traditional hard hat is and what features and benefits there are to climbing helmets? Right, right. Um, well, a, a, a climbing helmet is, is really uh, has really got some differences with your normal hard hat. The first, the first one is an inter interface here with uh, which would would allow a good use of of uh, hearing protection or uh, communication devices. Uh, we'll see it in in this one here, where where you know your your muffs aren't being pushed down. Uh, by the helmet itself, you know, people used to use our Ekron helmet, but it was a straight line across there. So everybody, uh, you know, people using chainsaws or uh, cement cutters, that yeah, sort of thing, you're grinders, way above like uh, 95 decibels, you have to have hearing protection. So that interface is really important there so that you don't get your, uh, your uh, earmuffs uh, uh, pushed down. Another really important uh, feature of these is, is the chin strap, of course. Uh, super, super important to have a good four point, three point or four point chin straps on a helmet because in the event of a misstep or a fall, you know, there could be a, a, a first and secondary impact, right? You're falling, you hit something, helmet gets popped off before you're going to hit something else or hit the ground. So super important to have chin straps. These are interchangeable if they get too smelly or, or you want to change them out for a longer chin strap, uh, totally uh, uh, changeable as well. Um, Another thing on chin straps too is even if you don't take a fall but your helmet falls off and you may be in the middle of something you don't want to stop and you may not be wearing head protection for 10 minutes and who knows what can happen in that right. bit of time. Ex exactly. Uh, another uh, design feature of a, a work at height helmet is, is really a, a short brim. And the reason uh, we introduced that, again, about 20, 25 years ago, is that when you're working at height, you're always uh, having to keep your eyes kind of somewhat above you, you know, kind of looking up uh, ahead of you. So if you do this all day and you have a brim, you're going to have to tilt your head back. And after a 10, 10 hour shift, your neck is really hurting. But the biggest important reason is that we want people to raise their eyes. We don't want them to deviate their head because now whatever's coming down is going to hit them right right in the face so it's nice to to be able to work without brims and uh, that's one of the big differences uh, with regards to that obviously adjustability comfort mm -hmm. all uh, strong points with these helmets we have a proprietary uh, kind of uh, centering it's called a center fit and essentially these two uh, little uh, dials that you're seeing on your screen now really help center the head and the helmet so that that creates a couple of really nice benefits. You're really balancing the helmet when it's on your head and, uh, and essentially uh, you've got protection both front and back as opposed to cranking a knob at the back and pushing the helmet, uh, pushing your head up mm -hmm. front in the helmet. So that makes sense. Inter interesting things there. So how about uh, the differences between the various lines of helmets? So you've got, you know, the Vertex and the Stratos. Can you talk a little bit about those? Right, right. So we do have two lines of helmets that we sell uh, with, within the work at Height Industry. Uh, the Vertex has a pretty uh, heavy-duty shell on it. Uh, it's ABS uh, plastic. And, of course, uh, it's, it's, the shell, it's the shell that actually deflects to absorb energy. So that's... Uh, that's uh, important in the construction of that, of that helmet. It's also puncture resist, uh, mm -hmm. resistant, right? It won't puncture and, and touch your head when you're going through all the testing, uh, the Z89 uh, tests from, uh, from ANSI. Um, and that's a suspension system. So you get good air, air circulation, and, uh, but it's a little bit heavier than the Strato. The Strato is a, is a helmet that uh, depends on uh, polystyrene foam on the inside to actually uh, def deflect or absorb absorb the energy so if you do get hit you know you're only going to get a certain amount of transmission of force there mm -hmm. to your uh, head and and, uh, and uh, neck area um, so this helmet we can put more uh, comfort elements into it but a little less uh, vent uh, ventilated sometimes because it's not a suspension system um, having said that both of these uh, helmets come in a uh, type C they're they're class class one type C helmets um, we do have the class E helmets as well they can have ventilation sure. like this uh, that protects you against electrical uh, hazards and uh, uh, really nice to offer these in 
in high-vis colors like these, so you can be seen around moving equipment, as well as a number of other colors, so you can uh, match your, your corporate colors as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I see there are a few other accessories on these. Can, do you want to run through uh, just some of the add-ons that you yeah. can put on your helmets? Yeah, a, a nape, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of a textiles sunshine, yeah. like that is good for keeping stuff out of your out of your back if you're doing some cutting or, or whatever. Really nice and it protects you against the sun sure. sun as well. Obviously, these uh, snap on and and snap off uh, uh, visors. We also have them in a vesh in a in a mesh. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, all of our helmets all have these uh, clips on them, so that you can wear you can wear a, um, a a headlamp with them. And they have the holes on the side as well that are great receptors for communication equipment or hearing protection. Uh, our helmets all fit uh, Peltor and 3M uh, yeah, hearing standard hearing clips. protection uh, there. So. Okay. Well, you touched on headlamps, uh, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, some of Petzl's offering for headlamps. So. Continuing on, obviously, the head protection side, uh, Petzl's well known for their headlamps. Whether you're working uh, through the night to avoid the heat of summer or in a confined space where you can't get a work lamp in there or something like that, uh, they're a pinch in a lot of situations. So what are some innovations uh, that Petzl has put into their headlamps and what are the benefits of those innovations? Right, so Petzl's been making headlamps for 50 years and uh, we've really evolved this uh, hands-free concept of uh, having lighting, uh, not having to hold your headlamp uh, or your, your uh, mag your light in yeah. your in your in your mouth or things like that. So uh, we've taken that concept of uh, hands-free lighting to uh, to really great uh, great heights. So so the first the first thing you need to know about our uh, uh, our headlamps is that they have a multitude of mounting and wearing capabilities. You can you can just wear it on your head with a headband. You can put it around your neck. You can put it on the ground, and uh, you know it disconnects from the from the helmet. You can clip it onto our helmets. Our helmets are adapted with uh, with connection points there, where you can just clip it on there. Of course, you can put it on your hel your helmet with headbands, but you, we also have a bunch of different uh, adapters here that can actually uh, stick onto your helmet. Very, very strong adhesive uh, uh, mounting brackets here so that if you are wearing a, uh, a shield, you're going to be able to position that he headlamp a little higher so there's no interference between the, the two products. So a couple of nice things about our headlamps. We make, we make some that are ultra um, compact and uh, they can work on either uh, AAA batteries or of course we, we all want to be environmentally sensitive so uh, our core battery is uh, is kind of extraordinary we, we uh, we've shrunk it down to uh, a really small uh, package there that without any adapters or anything that just replaces uh, the three AAA batteries in there and essentially, uh, you're, you're getting about the life of 900 AAA wow. batteries with, with uh, one, uh, uh, one core battery like this. So this can be charged on a USB port and a great little uh, environmentally friendly. Yeah, it's uh, a, lot, a lot of copper tops. <laughs> so you can see that this one here, I've mounted it on this on a, a sticker, sticker, and that can stick right on your right onto your helmet. So nice to have your helmet balanced as well. You know. Um, if you put heavy stuff on the front of your helmet, that's why the wheels and you can really adjust your helmet so that it, it's nice and balanced. We do have a couple of really nice proprietary uh, headlamps that I'll talk about in a minute, but our headlamps are, are, are pretty much uh, water, the water tightness of our headlamps. All our headlamps can be worn uh, running or walking in the rain or snow. Um, we have higher uh, waterproofness uh, classification of our headlamps all the way to putting them in a meter, meter of water uh, uh, for 30 minutes and, and they still work after mm -hmm. that. So of course there's a price difference. Uh, it's, sure. it's not easy to, to make a headlamp both uh, uh, dust and, and, and water resistant. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that when we, when we address these headlamps a little bit. We have a couple of proprietary um, um, 
functions to our headlamps, which, which like I said before, they re it really brings the concept of hands-free lighting to a higher, uh, higher level. So this is a swift uh, uh, reactive lighting headlamp. So what this does is it has a, a light meter on it, not unlike a camera that we're in front of <laughs> sure. here, and it senses the amount of uh, ambient light that's around, and it, if you set it on that setting, it will adjust uh, to the light demand that uh, is required. So if you're looking at uh, your, uh, your uh, JHA, let's say, and, and you don't need as much light, it'll, it'll dim down, and then if you look further out into the distance, automatically it'll change to a, a, a greater output, uh, lumen output. This, this light here, the Swift goes up to 900 lumens, so we're not talking about 30, 40 lumens anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, our ultra compact lights are anywhere from 3 to 450 lumens. This one's uh, nine, 900. Uh, the uh, the top-of-the-line headlamps that we sell are these duo headlamps, a really cool face-to-face uh, -face feature. So if we're working together, this is like 1,100 <laughs> lumens. So if we're working together and I and you're within 25 feet of me, there's a sensor in here, mm -hmm. and it'll tell me, ah, oh, there's another duo headlamp in, in the vicinity. As soon as we turn and face each other, the lights will dim down. So I'm not going to blind, blind right. you so that you can't see for the next 30 seconds. So really nice technology there, and uh, always great to keep those guys working on the towers, even if it's dark. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's all great information. Um, and I guess... If uh, anyone has any questions about uh, what we've talked about here, you can reach out to any of our gear experts. You can reach out to Petzl, uh, and they can they can answer all that. They also have, like I mentioned yesterday, a wealth of information, tech tips, that sort of thing, on their website. Uh, and we as well have a lot of video content, um, a lot of written content, PDFs in our knowledge base uh, that cover a lot of these uh, these segments as well. So, um, Michelle, thanks again for joining Thank us today. Uh, thanks you. for having us out here in, in Utah. And uh, again, we'll be back same time, same place tomorrow, uh, talking about some tips and tricks right at work. So, thanks everyone.